He's striding the aquatic crossroads, connecting the two most populous regions on Earth. This small nation, lacking any significant natural resources or fertile land, has become an economic colossus, transforming this once remote island from mangrove to metropolis. The story of Singapore begins when a prince from the Srivijaya Empire took refuge on the island after a particularly bad storm. While hunting, he spotted a lion, which he took as a good omen and decided to build a city there, calling it Lion City, or Singapore. The pre-existing trading settlement of Tamasic on the island was incorporated into the Kingdom of Singapore. Over the next 100 years, Singapore would become a prosperous trading city with strong kings. They developed strong trading ties with the Mongol Yuan dynasty in China. However, both the growing Mashapai Empire, based on the island of Java in the south, and the kingdom of Ayutthaya in the north, both claimed the city as their own, and would both lay siege to Singapore. In 1398, it would be burnt to the ground. The last Raja of the kingdom of Singapore would escape to the north and found the Malacca Sultanate, converting from Hinduism to Islam. As a bustling international trading hub, Malacca emerged as a center for Islamic learning, dissemination, and encouraged the development of the Malay language, literature, culture, and arts. Malay became the lingua franca for the maritime Southeast Asia during this period, and the old settlement of Tamasic was revitalized. This golden age came to an end when the Portuguese arrived and conquered Malacca. The Sultan's son would flee to Sumatra and found the Johor Sultanate which Singapore was part of. In 1613, the Portuguese would burn the city to its foundations yet again, and the city was completely depopulated and would fall into obscurity for more than 200 years. During the Napoleonic Wars, the British were able to challenge the Dutch for supremacy in the region. It was then that Stamford Raffles established the trading post and port of Singapore. The son of a British sea captain, he joined the East India Company at the age of 14 as an office boy. By the age of 24, he had learned the local languages in and around Malaya, and was promoted to governor of Java at the age of 30. There, he outlawed slavery in the former Dutch colony and encouraged private property ownership. In 1819, he entered into a contract with the Sultan of Johor for the sale of the island of Singapore to the East India Trading Company for the sum of 60,000 Spanish reales. In 1826, Singapore would be joined together with Malacca and Penang to form the Strait Settlements. The unprecedented free market policies that Raffles implemented attracted massive amounts of maritime traffic and migrants. In his first five years, the island's population increased from 1 to 10,000 and over 100,000 in its first 50 years. There was no import tax, income tax, or corporate tax. Opium, prostitution, and alcohol consumption were a few of the only things taxed in this remarkable city. Raffles saw these as stifling the city's productivity and morals. This changed in 1867, when Singapore became a crown colony of the British Empire. The city received a facelift. Public buildings, modernized police force, and institutions were established. Organized crime, which had thrived in the city beforehand, was brought to an end. In 1869, the Suez Canal was completed in Egypt, cutting 5,000 miles off the voyage to the Far East. Singapore again saw a massive rise in traffic, immigration, and profits. Approximately three quarters of the immigrants coming to the city during this period were Chinese, followed by Indian and Malay newcomers. When the last Chinese emperor was deposed in 1912 and a nationalistic republic was established, much of the Chinese population in Singapore was empowered by nationalistic and republican ideals, cutting off their pigtails that they viewed as a symbol of their subservience to Chinese imperial rule. Mobs of young men roamed the streets, cutting off the pigtails of any who had not done so already. The political awakening did not take root with the Chinese elite of Singapore, however. Known as the Straits Chinese, many had been there for many generations and spoke Malay as a first language and considered themselves closer to Great Britain than to China. This would change after the three and a half year Japanese occupation during World War II. Singapore felt abandoned by the British and Britain seemed inadequate to deal with the high unemployment and other problems that plagued Singapore. In 1959, Singapore would become an independent colony within the British Empire, electing Lee Kuan Yew as the nation's first prime minister. In 1963, Singapore briefly joined Malaysia as a state 
and was expelled shortly afterwards in 1965, making Singapore a fully independent nation. Lee Kuan Yew governed Singapore for just over three decades and led the nation from the brink of economic collapse to one of the most robust global economies. Gaining a reputation for low corruption and economic freedom, this shipping, financial, and manufacturing hub has continued to adapt to our changing world. I hope you have enjoyed this fast overview of Singapore's unique history. Don't forget to smash the like button, hit the subscribe, and ring the bell icon to get notifications every time I make a new video. Let me know what you think, what you liked and liked out in the comments. I always enjoy hearing what you have to say. Big thanks to my followers and patrons. You guys are fantastic. And you could be a patron too if you go head over to Patreon and starting at just a dollar a month, you can help support this channel.